This is a slide of Mount Hood looming over the Columbia Plateau with the uh, Mary Hill Vineyards in the uh, bottom of the canyon there near of the, of the Columbia River. I want to start with uh, introducing you to our plate tectonic setting. Uh, we're up there for all of these slides. Watch for the little red star. That's where you are sitting right now. So uh, pay attention to the little red star. So we are on the North American plate, which is moving gradually to the southwest. Um, and there's a plate boundary. We're on an active margin here on the west coast of North America. And for much of that margin, uh, it's sort of a strike-slip boundary where the two plates are moving uh, sideways relative to one another. And that's how we interact with the Pacific plate. And you've, most of you have probably heard of the San Andreas Fault. But in the Pacific Northwest, there's a small plate called the Juan de Fuca plate uh, that's just offshore. And it's pushing its crust to the northwest. And so we converge at a subduction zone. And the oceanic crust of that plate is underwriting the Pacific Northwest. Um, and generating uh, partial melts of, of the mantle as it slides underneath the mantle and volcanoes are popping up uh, uh, as a result. So it's very similar to the situation in the Andes, um, but it's a, a much more restricted area. And we're gonna zoom into that area right there. And so there's where we are right now. The red uh, mountains there are, are volcanoes. Again, we're at the Red Star. Offshore, we have a subduction zone where the Juan de Fuca plate's going underneath. Um, and we have this big mountain range of volcanoes. Um, then Mount Hood is the most prominent one, and hopefully in the next couple of days when we're up in the vineyards at a, um, uh, on a field trip, you'll see the beautiful pyramid-shaped peak of uh, Mount Hood uh, off, to your, off to your east. Also, this very dramatically shows the slide uh, Google Earth image shows the dramatic effect of the rain shadow that the Cascade Range produces. So you can see how green it is to the west of the range and how, how dry it is uh, to the east. So this is a cartoon showing uh, our, our, our tectonic environment where we have a spreading ridge offshore. Uh, we have a subduction zone with really not much of a trench because it's full of uh, sediment. And we have a four arc range, which we call the, the coast range here, which is uh, just to our west here in McMinnville. We have a four arc basin, which is the Willamette Valley or the Puget Lowlands up to the north, uh, volcanic arc. And then in Washington, at least, we have a large basin uh, to the uh, east of the range. So here's a digital elevation model, uh, mostly the um, the oranges and reds are above about 600 meters. Most of the viticulture takes place at elevations below 600 meters. So if you look on that map and where you see the greens and the yellows, those are the places where we could potentially uh, grow grapes. And everything that's kind of uh, reddish and orange and, uh, is too high for us to, to grow grapes. And we can put this in a plate tectonic uh, context where we can divide the area into four arc ranges, which is areas uplifted in the four arc into mountain ranges, the four arc basins, uh, the volcanic arc itself, the large back arc basin of the Columbia Basin, and then uh, we have this strange uh, crescent shaped zone in southern Idaho that was produced by the migration of North America over the, the hot spot in the mantle that's presently under Yellowstone uh, National Park. So these are our grape growing regions. These aren't the a AVAs. These are just the sort of uh, valleys where viticulture mostly takes place. And again, you can see it's mostly in those uh, low, topographically low regions, mostly in the four arc basin of the Willamette Valley and the back arc basin of the um, of the Columbia Basin and, and to some degree in the, in the Snake River Valley. So I'm going to go through each of these and just give you a brief introduction uh, to, to some of them. And I'm going to spend a little more time on the Columbia Basin and the Willamette Valley since that's where probably about 90, 95% of the grapes are, are coming from. Uh, the Snake River Valley uh, is over here in Idaho. Um, looks kind of like this. It's a broad, flat floored basin with uh, volcanic rocks on top and the Snake River meandering through it. The bedrock consists of either uh, basalt of a couple of different ages, uh, tufts erupted from 
rhyolitic centers of volcanism, and then ancient lake sediments, which are, are mostly Pliocene. The actual boundary of the Snake River Valley AVA is determined by the lake level of glacial of uh, ancient Lake Idaho, which was a Pliocene lake. So they used the old lake shore of that lake to determine the boundaries of the AVA. The soils there are wind deposited sand and silt that overlie uh, lake sediments and alluvial terraces. This is kind of a cartoon cross section of what we have there. There's a large downdrop block of crust um, that's full of volcanic rock. Uh, Snake River's cut a canyon through that, um, and then it's overlain by these lake sediments and volcanic rocks. Next, we'll go to the volcanic arc. And because uh, the volcanic arc with all the big volcanoes is relatively high, we don't grow a lot of grapes up on the volcanic arc. It's uh, generally uh, in, uh, climatically inhospitable, and um, the rocks from those volcanoes, the actual lavas or the pyroclastic rocks, don't get very too far from the source in most cases. There are a few uh, AVAs there that I've highlighted, the Lake Chelan, Natchez Heights, and Columbia Gorge, that do have some input from, ca from the modern Cascade volcanoes. But in general, those big volcanoes don't uh, supply a lot of material to our, uh, to our vineyards. Uh, this is a, a picture of Mount Hood rising above a vineyard in the Hood River, uh, or in the um, Columbia Gorge AVA, and there are some pyroclastic materials and, and uh, mud flow deposits and a million year old basaltic volcano called Underwood Volcano that do contribute uh, materials to some of these vineyards. Um, and this is Lake Chelan AVA, which is a beautiful glacial lake in uh, northern Washington. And much of the sediment there contains uh, a lot of pumice and pyroclastic material from a, uh, a fairly recent eruption of Glacier Peak Volcano. So these truly have, some of these areas truly have volcanic derived soils. The four arc ranges, um, the, the viticulture in southern Oregon and the Rogue River Valley and the Umpqua Valley take place in, in, in valleys that are incised into some of these four arc ranges, which have very complex geology. Uh, this is the Rogue Valley. Um, and the bedrock's a complex mixture of very, a lot of different kinds of rocks that were accreted to North America. The soils are primarily valley alluvium, terrace gravels, and the viticulture is mostly down uh, near the valley floors. Um, the back arc basin we'll talk about is with the Columbia Valley here, and these are the AVAs. Um, huge amounts of basalt. The bedrock is dominated by Columbia River basalt. And the soils are luss, wind deposited silt uh, blown in, and ice age flood sediment and weathered basalt. So I want to spend just a little bit of time. This is really important to our story of the Columbia River basalts, both to the Willamette Valley and to the Columbia Basin. So these are some of the largest basalt eruptions on Earth. Uh, I'll just let you read that. It's a pretty staggering amount of lava. Uh, uh, this is what Eastern Washington looked like 15 million years ago, or what Iceland looked like a year or so ago, because uh, that's where I stole this from. Um, but that's a lot of basalt. Uh, that's about 600 meters of basalt, and um, the basalt in the middle of the Columbia Basin is on the order of 10 times that thick. So we're talking about a lot of basalt. Uh, this is the area that it covered. Uh, and you can see the red star there, we're right on the edge of it in the Willamette Valley. It flowed all the way down the Columbia River, up the Willamette Valley, out to the Pacific Ocean, and down the Oregon coast. Um, so it's an incredibly extensive um, uh, set of lava flows. So there's the Columbia Valley AVA and the Willamette Valley AVA just to show you. Uh, there are a couple of my students working hard just to give you a vineyard scene. This is Cascade Cliff Vineyard in the Columbia Gorge with basalt cliffs in the background. Our other big story is the Ice Age floods. So the largest documented floods in Earth history um, affected this area. These are hard to wrap your head around. We're talking about volumes of water 10 times the combined flow of every river on Earth coming down the Columbia Gorge. It's just kind of impossible to imagine. So uh, I'll let you read that. Um, but these floods occurred uh, between 15 and 12,000 years ago or so. There were many of them, uh, and I will go through the scenario really quickly. 
This is the maximum advance of the Cordilleran ice sheet during the last major glaciation. Uh, and it came down and dammed a river in northern Idaho called the Clark Fork River. It created a lake called Glacial Lake Missoula, um, which impounded an enormous amount of water. When the water got high enough, it floated the ice dam, which would have been on the order of six or 800 meters high. So we're talking about a lot of ice. It destroyed that ice dam, and the resulting floods swept across eastern Washington, down the Columbia River, all the way up the Willamette Valley to Eugene, which is very far south of here, and out to the ocean. And this happened repeatedly as the ice would advance and reform the dam. There's the Columbia Valley AVA and the Willamette Valley AVA for scale to show you that these areas were dramatically affected by these flooding events. Here's some uh, flood gravels on the Red Mountain AVA in, um, in central Columbia Basin. And here are slack water deposits. Each one of those layers represents one of these catastrophic flood events. Uh, this is in the central Walla Walla Valley. And similar deposits occur in the Willamette Valley where you are now. Uh, a major outgrowth of this is that a lot of wind deposited silt was laid down. So after each flood, there would have been huge mud flats. The wind would pick up across uh, and blow across these devastated areas covered with mud, pick up the silt fraction and blow it off mostly to the northeast. And so there are enormous thick deposits of silt deposit all over eastern Washington uh, and much of Oregon. And I just took a handful from my feet and just threw it up in the air for this picture, just for effect. Um, and this is a typical uh, profile of eastern Washington. Uh, and you have a layer of wind deposited silt on top, silt and sand from the Ice Age floods over basalt bedrock. Uh, this is at Spring Valley Vineyard in Walla Walla. Again, we have lus over basalt. Uh, and then we have the Four Arc Basins, uh, where you are now. Puget Sound is one of those. There's not a lot of viticulture up there. Um, that area was impacted by the glaciers, and so most of the soils there uh, are related to glaciers, either outwash or till. So it's a very different area uh, for viticulture since it's been glaciated. Um, I'm going to concentrate on the Willamette Valley since that's where we are. Uh, this is my student Cameron Penner Ash, uh, the son of a famous uh, winery here in, in, the, in the valley, doing some temperature studies. And so here's a cartoon uh, about how the geology developed where you are right now. So we had the subduction zone. We had a series of seamounts or islands offshore that were made of basalt that were brought in like a conveyor belt uh, into the subduction zone and then were scraped off and incorporated onto the leading edge of North America. So all this basalt, this terrain we call Celestia, was incorporated. Uh, then it was covered by a layer of sediments uh, during the tertiary period uh, from erosion of sediments off of the, uh, of the volcanic arc. That was then uplifted uh, as we compressed the arc and left a layer of sedimentary rock in what is now the Willamette Valley. Um, we'll zoom into that. And so now we're just going to concentrate on this little area. And the Columbia River basalt then flows in and fills up the valley to, to a certain level. We get a little bit uh, more compression and folding, and then the Missoula flood sediments come in and fill the valley on top of the basalt. Again, we're at the red star right there. And we'll zoom into that. And this is sort of the modern situation where we have the Willamette River with recent alluvium flowing into Missoula flood sediments and then hills on the flanks composed of Columbia River basalt and sedimentary rock. And I'm not going to say too much about that because I have some esteemed colleagues in this room that know way more about it than I do because they live and work here. Um, this is a classic uh, deeply weathered section of basalt with uh, red oxidized clay rich soils uh, that you find. Um, the classic Jory soil series. Uh, on the, in, from the Dundee Hills, uh, which is developed on these Columbia River basalts. Um, this is a teaser for some of my friends in the room that are Willamette Valley people. There's actually some limestone here. Uh, we need to figure out how to get that planted. Uh, but, um, and here's some Missoula flood sediments in a cut bank on the uh, Willamette River, uh, I believe. 
Um, and uh, this is a park just right outside of McMinnville here. And I'm going to end with this slide because it tells a spectacular story. Uh, this is the uh, Erratic Rock natural site, um, just 10 kilometers from here. And this enormous boulder of metamorphic rock was incorporated into a glacier in southern Canada or Montana, became part of the ice dam that formed glacial Lake Missoula, was incorporated into an iceberg that was then floated down in a torrential flood that backed up into the Willamette Valley. And then when the floods drained out, the iceberg came to rest on the, on the side of a hill, slowly melted and dropped its cargo on the side of a hill. And the, there is no rock like that within hundreds of kilometers of here. So this is a, an exotic ice rafted rock that uh, bears testimony to the amazing power of the Missoula floods, which had a lot to do with forming our soils uh, in, in the Willamette Valley and, and, and in eastern Washington. And that's me sitting on a huge chunk of granite that was brought into the Yakima Valley and the, by the same way with uh, Mount Adams uh, towering in the distance. So thank you and welcome to the Northwest. And uh, I'm sure you'll learn more details about all this stuff in other talks and field trips that we have today.